Hey guys, um, this is my second YouTube video. Yesterday was my first one. Uh, and what yesterday's video was about was, uh, it was about guppy breeding and you know, line breeding and uh, the pros and cons of line breeding and colony breeding and things like that, okay? What breeders as line breeders, okay? The guys who go into line breeding, selective breeding, etc. need to do extra. And what are the drawbacks of colony breeding, etc. So, when I was looking back at that video, I realized that uh, there are some terms that breeders use which may not be understandable to a common man, okay? So, what I decided was, why not break these out, break these terms for you guys and make it simple, okay? Let's get right into it. First thing is inbreeding, okay? Uh, when we look at wild guppies or... Uh, anything wild okay wild guppies or uh, anything wild like you can say horses or anything since we are dealing with guppies why not take guppies as an example so when we look at wild guppies they are generally gray gray or like brown in color and some of them will have a little bit of color on their tails or somewhere in their body okay so what we as humans did was we took those guppies with little bit of color we got them to breed we got their offsprings and in their offsprings we saw that yeah uh, some of the some of them of uh, offsprings were had a uh, little color on their bodies just like their parents and some of them didn't so eliminated the ones that didn't have color took the ones with color got them to breed again remember these guppies that are breeding for the second generation are related okay they are from the same brood like they are brothers and sisters fine so this process is done multiple times to achieve something that's good okay so next time like uh, the second generation second to the wild generation right uh, when the offsprings of the wild caught guppies bred we observed that yeah there are slightly more number of offsprings with uh, color and they're having a little bit more color or maybe shine to their body so we did this multiple times to get the hundreds and thousands of guppy strains that we have today okay so this process where uh, offsprings from the same brood like brothers and sisters or related closely related individuals made have babies this process is known as inbreeding okay so what happens then inbreeding increases uh, you know it decreases the chances of uh, what to say it decreases the increases the chance of foreign genes entering like not foreign but uh, not from the original gene pool entering into the strains and it increases the chances of recessive traits showing up. Sometimes uh, these recessive traits are good. Like you can say color, full body color, full body shine and things like that. And sometimes it's bad, okay? Uh, so that's why uh, you can see how wild guppies survive. Uh, I'll take you next time on a video. Maybe after some videos, I will go on a trip, a field trip, and uh, I'll show you how wild guppies survive. They have excellent immune systems. They have, you know, they live in drains where uh, people dump their daily garbages and things. And look at our guppies. Sensitive, much more sensitive than the wild ones. So that's what, uh, in this, turn, this thing that is happening, okay, where uh, recessive traits start showing up, and recessive traits that are not good, okay, uh, like bent spines, sometimes, some uh, guppies may be born without eyes, and things like that, Those the, uh, that condition is known as inbreeding depression, where too much inbreeding leads to recessive traits that are harmful for the organism, they start showing up, that's known as inbreeding depression, okay. These guppies that we have today are highly inbred, that's why we see so much stability in their uh, traits okay if you breed say uh, full red guppies you will definitely get full red guppies and that's 100% guaranteed why because these guys have been inbred for decades 
in order to get their traits to be stabilized okay so this kind of inbreeding leads to inbreeding depression it's not good now how to cure inbreeding depression if you guys watch my last video uh, we spoke about outcrossing okay so a single outcross is enough to eliminate inbreeding depression that is why line breeders or selective breeding guys those guys maintain two two lines of the same strain okay so one individual from line a and the second individual from line b they get together they meet have babies inbreeding depression is cured okay so outcross saying uh, the individuals that are meeting should have a generation gap of four to six generations they should not be related four to you know related four to six generations they should be their their uh, relations should be four to six generations apart and such individuals get together they're from the same strain okay they're not wild guppies or they're not guppies from another strain they're from the same strain they meet they have babies and inbreeding depression is cured okay so fertility of the coming generation of, of the offsprings of the outcross will be high traits will be 99 percent the same because they're of the same strain okay uh, other deformities like sometimes you know bent spines and things like that that will be cured and it'll be overall good okay so that's what an outcross is so next what we are going to look at is interspecific okay sometimes what happens is when you put mollies and guppies together or uh, you know something like that a related species what happens is those guys have babies okay and now interspecific mating is uh, not that successful like it's, it is but it has to be a closely related organism maybe of the same uh, you know falling under the same genera and things like that so uh, mollies and guppies when they have babies they're known as muppies or collies okay and they'll have they'll have like the body of body size of a molly with the colors and the tails and the finish of the of guppies it looks awesome but the problem is these individuals are sterile uh, we can take examples like uh, mules okay we have seen mules uh, mules are uh, the result of a male donkey mating with a female horse okay so these guys are sterile but uh, this thing brings out something known as hybrid vigor okay mixing the two desired qualities of two species and getting an organism uh, that it, it is sterile but it has the good qualities of both species okay so what mules have is mules have the speed and the agility the body size of a horse and the endurance of a donkey okay so similarly golly uh, like gollies muppies these things uh, mollies and guppy hybrids okay the, these guys have the size of mollies and the finish and the uh, body patterns sometimes of guppies so we've got them to have best of both worlds but they're sterile they're infertile that's why we don't have in, have them in the hobby we don't see them that much okay because they can't breed so uh, i'll take you guys uh, to my aquarium i'll show you what uh, you know colony breeding defects or uh, inbreeding defects are okay like colony breeding is a kind of it's not that preferred because uh, all the defective individuals they'll breed together and they'll have babies and those babies will be messed up okay i'll take you now just stay tuned uh, so this is uh, the result of uh, colony breeding of uh, my guppies and if you look at this guy can you see his spine it's deformed okay see it's deformed that's what happens when all individuals are allowed to breed maybe his father or his mother had deformed spines if you look at this girl see this one right here even she has a deformed spine okay these guys have excellent growth uh, because i've been feeding them good quality food this is just like one month old or maybe little maybe a one month and five day period okay so uh, this is the these are the offsprings of my colony breeding guys okay if you can see the deformities 
the camera doesn't i'm shooting with my mobile guys so it takes a little bit of time to focus can you see this guy see how deformed his spine is see, look at that one right there behind you see that hey guys so as you saw uh colony breeding is not that good okay you can do it for uh, you know for uh, making a profit and things like that but uh, it generally spoils the strain as you saw in the clip maximum of those babies they have bent spines and they're highly deformed i have nothing to do with them so i'll be probably giving it away for free or maybe you know feeding it to my arowana i have one silver silver arowana uh, i'll introduce him to you guys later during the videos okay in the later videos we'll uh, take a look at him too so uh, anyways guys uh, like comment comment all your queries and uh, please tell me if anything's wrong with my uh, explanation or maybe see because uh, i'm not an expert it's only to the best of my knowledge that i share with you guys so i may be wrong so you guys need to tell me anything that's wrong in the comments or you guys can also let me know your uh, doubts your queries in the comments and i will definitely let you clear your uh, doubts queries etc and uh, it also gives me a chance to improve guys uh, and you know add more points to the videos things like that if you guys let me know your queries i'll know how you guys think and uh, i'll uh, try to incorporate as many things as i can in my videos okay like please comment and please subscribe guys it's uh, you know i'm new but uh, i'm new to youtube uh, if you like my videos please like comment and subscribe guys thanks a lot we'll meet you next time